Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the RSL show on KSL Sports. My name is Andy Munoz and today I'm joined by Joshua Clark. Josh, how are you doing, dude? Wonderful, my friend. How are you? Good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Time to talk some soccer. We are going to cover, obviously, the amazing match, the amazing uh, turnaround from Real Salt Lake to come back and be my dad's, well, one of my dad's favorite club. He's got two Liga and Mexi- uh, clubs, which is unfair. But uh, RSL is that, coming is back. That allowed? Is that allowed? I think so, man. I, where Club León is from, Guanajuato, that's where my dad is technically from. But for some reason, he's also like a Pumas fan. And I don't really understand why. But uh, it, it, I think... It's a good move on his part because, you know, had he not been a Pumas fan, I would have never been able to ask uh, Bofo, Sebastian Sacedo, to get him a signed kit, which he delivered uh, personally, which was pretty cool. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about Sebastian Sacedo, and uh, we'll, we're going to talk a little bit about the league leading up to Real Salt Lake's matchup with uh, LAFC. LAFC hot off a win 7-1 over FC Juarez, a club that Sebastian Saucedo coincidentally uh, plays for uh, currently. So let's get into that. We will uh, speak all about that. But first, um, we have to uh, pause for a minute and we have to honor one of our friends, one of our supporters at Real Salt Lake at the club. Uh, who recently passed, and we were very shocked, distraught, saddened to hear that John Jenna's battle with ALS uh, ultimately came to an end, and uh, it, it's just a very sad moment. I think not, well, obviously not only for us, but for his friends, his family, um, the supporters who knew of John Jenna and what he did and meant to this club. And so we, we, we want to send our condolences, our thoughts. I mean, just everything to friends and fam of, of John Jenna. He was an amazing human being. And, um, Josh, you actually reached out on Saturday once we got the news. And, and by the way, we've had a little bit of time to process this and it is fresh. And, um, it was difficult to get this news because John was a, a really like he, he was like a super just an advocate, a supporter of helping out small people like us in the space who podcast and, and, and do media coverage for this team. He was just amazing. And so um, it's hard to talk about these things and we wish we could say a lot more. Um, but Josh, you had a really cool idea and I'm sure that somebody else would have thought of it, man. So why don't you talk a little bit about uh, what we did and what we actually encourage anyone who is a supporter of Real Salt Lake to come out and uh, contribute to. Yeah. You know, we just thought we would get a little memorial started, right? It's, it's really hard to express the grief, I guess. And, and show your support outside of, you know, sending flowers to the family and things like that. But, it's also hard to bother people and get addresses and things like that. So, you know, we went out and just started a little memorial for fans at the stadium to, to stop, um, pay their respects, you know, leave flowers if they want to, um, it's right outside of the team store. You can't miss it. It's actually grown way more than I thought it would. Um, and honestly, I hope, I, I hope we see it explode. Really. I, he, John was one of the kindest and most positive people I've ever met. And, and I know a lot of people say this in hindsight when people pass, um, but but I genuinely believe, genuinely believe that about John. Um, in the couple of years I've known him, I, I really just never met a more positive and, and kind person, and and he will honestly be very missed. So if you can, um, please go pay respects. If you need a place to go grieve, to just go have a moment of silence, um, it, it's just right outside of the team store. You can't miss it. Yeah, beautifully said, man. I. You know, I think when you when you sent me the news, uh, I was up in the mountains and it was weird, man. Like you couldn't really process it in the moment, but then just driving down, like you just start thinking about your friend and 
um, the conversations that we've had with John, not only at the stadium, but text message wise and, and running into him and um, being around him. I, I mean, it, it just felt like, um, I don't know, this one hits close and uh, it is, it was very tough to process, man. Like, I, I think I'm still processing it now. I think that's why I'm kind of talking the way that I am. Um, I tried to actually do a solo episode earlier today and I was like talking about like the, the memories and, and the first time that I met John and I couldn't do it, dude. Like I, I just could not get through it without either, um, getting highly emotional or just feeling like I just wasn't saying the right things. And, and I know that if, if John, we're here to encourage me like he, he like he has in the past um he would say it's no big deal like you know get it done and just super encouraging and so uh, but I, there's one story that i do want to share because uh this is you know there's always a lesson to be learned when you uh, encounter john or when you when you spoke with john and this was <laughs> I, I, it's a funny story because i i love how it happened and it just, it just says a little bit about the the humor, but also the humbleness of John Jenna. When I was working for KSL Sports, I went and covered the Portland and Real Salt Lake match, and we happened to be on the same flight, and we were heading back. And at this time, I didn't really like I knew of John Jenna, but like I didn't actually know him or know his face or anything about him. And so I'm just kind of sitting there with like my TV camera waiting to board this flight. And this dude comes over and he's super positive and he's so happy. But he goes, he said, Andy, Andy Munoz. Hey, man, I uh, love what you do. Uh, keep it up. It's great. Oh, you got the camera in your hand. You shot the game. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, big fan of what you guys are doing over at the RSL show. And this whole time, I'm just thinking like, man, this guy's like a super hardcore, avid RSL show listener, right? And it wasn't until he shifted his speech a little bit more to, hey, whatever you need, I'm here. If you need me, if you need access, whatever, we're happy to help you at the stadium. We can get you, you know, more player interviews, blah, blah, blah. So that shift like in my head was just all of a sudden like, okay, like who is this guy? And so then he hands me a business card and he says goodbye. And it isn't until like he's leaving that I look down and I see on the business card, uh, you know, vice president of communications PR. Right. And in the moment, dude, I was like, I really hope I didn't say anything (laughs) that's like going to get me in trouble uh, with this, you know, person who is obviously in high regard and high stature at the stadium. But it was a learning moment because he had every opportunity to just kind of pull that flex card and lead with, Hey, I'm the vice president of communications. I, but he didn't man. Like he, he just rolled up and just said, I love your show. And I love the content that you guys make. How can we support you? And it wasn't always that way at Real Salt Lake. Like it just wasn't like that in the past. So, encountering and meeting John and and having his positivity rub off, but also like the humility and the humbleness. And that's just one of several different instances. We'd run into the, him in the stadium. He wanted to know about your personal life. He wanted to know what was going on with with you. Uh, If he texted you, he was just asking you how your life was in general. How's everything going? And he's also someone who fought really hard through this diagnosis and he never let it show or, or change him in the sense of like what you mentioned, Josh, like his positivity, his outlook on life. Uh-huh. And I, I could only hope, you know, there's two things in my life, man. I, I could only hope that, that I could be seen as someone as positive as John. And that, and, and that also if, if for some reason, if I were ever to get a diagnosis like that, to be able to handle it as well as John did, I mean, what else could you say? Like this, this guy, he he said it on, I think it was Claret and Cobalt when he had a conversation with Trey, like he got a, he got, he he got his like death sentence when he got his diagnosis just to 
handle it the way that he did and be able to spread more positivity and affect people, not only in the organization, but I'm sure his family and his friends. Um, it's just, it's so inspirational and he'll be missed, man. Uh, I'm very fortunate. I got to see him one last time a few weeks ago at the stadium and I gave him a big hug and he was just as positive as ever. And um, if I, if I would have known that that was the last time I would have seen him, man, I I probably would have hugged him a little bit tighter, man. Um, It's crazy. So John Jenna, man, you were loved. Uh, All our condolences at the RSL family and, and his close family. Um, his wife and his children that he leaves behind. Um, we're all thinking of you in this in this moment. All right. all right. Yeah, heavy. Heavy's out of the way. I know, man. I I didn't like I said. I I didn't want to. I don't want to do that. But also, I I just feel like you you have to honor your friends, man. And I yeah. I would I would just hope that you know we could we could honor each other all in the same way, regardless of uh, what we're doing. Well, and. And to be completely honest, it's it's important for everyone, you know, no matter what the the context, the format, to to show those emotions and to have those emotions. So instead of bottling up and hiding them and not talking about it, it's important that we do. And you know, it's important for everyone to do so. So you know, don't don't be afraid to show your emotion or 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 talk if you need to talk. Right? It's it's all about mental health and it's important. So you know, I'm, I'm glad we talked about it. Cool. Rest easy, John Jenna. You'll be missed, man. You leave a wonderful legacy behind. Um, You're an amazing person. Um, Also, shout out to the Wasatch Legion, man. They went out and they made that. (laughs) And and the riot. (laughs) And the riot, man. They made our little cardboard uh, thing that we did for John. I mean, they just like, they they stepped it up. They went and added more flowers and flares and more signs and like TFOs and like they left him a jacket and uh, I think that's what I love most about being a fan of this club is that um, in times like these, we all drop like <laughs> any indifferences and not to say that we have indifferences with like these, you know, these people or anything like that, but it's, it's, it also sucks too. Right. Cause with tragedy, usually this happens, but it just kind of opens your eyes to like how many people care and how many people are on the same page with, honoring and supporting each other. And so I just want to give a big shout out to them. And um, if anyone's gone since, whether you're part of a supporter or like if you're not in media and you're just a fan or maybe you didn't know John, but like you see it's important to us and and especially to the club and his friends at the club. If you if you drop by, um, even just to go look at it, like I want to thank you. Uh, We want to thank you because that kind of support is is just it's it's like next level man i can't even express it like it's it makes me feel so good and if it makes me feel this good imagine how it makes people who were really really close to john uh and imagine how it makes his his family feel at this time too so big ups to uh the people that went out there all right so now that uh we have honored our our friend and person that we love so much Let's talk about this amazing result, man. Um, Club Leon comes to town. Let's talk about the first night. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we got to talk about the first night. Absolutely. We need to talk about the first night. So I've been busy with Major League Soccer work, Leagues Cup. It's been so hard to get a break. So I finally talked to them and I say, hey, you know what? I don't want to work this match. It's my dad's favorite club. And um, I want to see... I want to see all the action. So for the first time, dude, I go out, you know, pick my outfit, pick my shoes, got a cool little hat on, got all my camera equipment. I'm ready, dude. I got memory cards, batteries, everything. And the, the, like the literal minute that I get there, like on the pitch, you see the sign come up, severe thunderstorm, find shelter, game delay, match delay. And it was such a bummer. (laughs) <laughs> and it like sucked and we know how the rest of the night went absolute monsoon the craziest weather that we've had in utah for a while torrential never, maybe downpours it's it was just insane but also 
<laughs> it was a good opportunity too to get upstairs and see people that I haven't seen in a minute. Going to the press box, going to say hi to DJ Rockalypse, Brian Dunseth, uh, everyone in the in the media press box. We're chilling, we're hanging out. Pouring rain, cold, game delayed. It's it's at this point we're like we don't think the match is going to start. And then all of a sudden, a raccoon just crashes through the ceiling, bro. Crashes through the ceiling, causes mayhem, chaos inside of the press box. Eventually, we open the doors because at first everybody was just trying to get their videos. We open the door. Raccoon gets out, goes and hangs by a ledge, dude, like Indiana Jones style, like Lion King, bro. It's got its little claws there. And you got to credit the staff because they were trying to like get a broom and like shift it up and kind of slide its butt up so it wouldn't fall to the second level. And eventually the raccoon just like lost grip or jumped, falls to the ground, dude. And causes more mayhem, like, amongst all the fans that are, like, waiting in in an area to not get rained on. And then I just want to say, another staffer, dude, grabs this raccoon and, boom, puts it in a trash can, dude. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I was just thinking that moment, there's no amount of money that you could pay me as a security guard, bro, to risk my life in the sense that I'm not grabbing a raccoon, bro, who has probably got rabies. So you don't want the rabies, my guy? No, dude. Like, (laughs) I was like, that guy, I know you step up in job roles and you're like, hey, guys, I got this. But, dude, like, there's no way I would ever grab a raccoon in in any scenario and throw it in a freaking, like, this guy just grabbed it and, like, put it in a trash can like like nothing, dude. Anyway, I know I'm blabbing here, but just stick with me. Kayla Porter from KSL.com Sports. It's a weird relationship. KSL Sports, KSL.com Sports, whatever. They're two separate entities. It's it's weird. Kayla Porter tweets this video out, dude. And in like a matter of minutes, I think he, he got like 200K views. Or sorry. Yeah, 200,000 views. I think by the end of it, he had like a million views. But that... <laughs> Even though there was like no soccer played on that night, it got national attention. It got attention from the league. Uh, we had like soccer analysts, soccer personalities commenting on that uh, post. So, Josh, dude, what, what were your thoughts on that, bro? I mean, RSL has a very weird relationship with wild animals, doesn't it? The woodland it, critters, yeah. <laughs> I I almost I almost start to look at it as like omens. Right. The duck, the duck came. We beat a galaxy team. We weren't supposed to beat that day. Mm-hmm. Once the duck came. Right. I think that was yeah. lockdown's first game in Salt Lake city. That's right. I think maybe, um, then there was the cat in leagues cup. Pet Which, keys by the way, it, it wasn't. Yeah. I don't think it was a win, but it was like a win. No, but, they got pet key out. <laughs> right. It, it was what everyone wanted. Right. Like everyone wanted pet key to go. The cat comes, does it all for us. Right. It, it triggers pet key into his racist tirades. Um, and then the raccoon, while not on the same match day officially still, uh, you know, the raccoon shows up the night before a big win. So yeah, business, I think we need more wild animals popping in. Right. Yeah. What's, dude, what's the next wild animal? I don't know, but I feel like people just just need to bring wild animals and like set them loose. No, I'm kidding. Don't no, do no, that. definitely not that. Don't do that. I mean, what are we gonna? Are we gonna have some deer running through the pitch in the middle of a game, uh, a rattlesnake under the bench, <laughs> um, uh, a barn owl in the rafters? Like, I don't know. Like, what what's next? I'd love to see a barn owl like in the top bin instead of the goalpost. Um, but like, but all you can see is his wings in the light, so it's like casting a huge shadow. Can you? Imagine? <laughs> It is crazy, man, but it's it's so much fun, dude, because, uh, it, it, again, it's just building, like, this weird culture of wild animals. I guess the cat, not really wild, but in a way, kind of wild. I mean, it, it was homeless. It was homeless. Feral, feral cat. That's home, that's wild. Until that night. You know who owns yeah. that cat now? Uh, the trader himself, Freddy Juarez. Yeah. It's rumored, actually. it's I don't think it's a rumor. Trey told us. Uh, Trey told us that uh, Freddie Juarez, after that match, adopted that cat and took Which, it home. That is cool of him. I'll, I'll give him props for that. Yeah. 
I'm just curious if he still has the cat. Or did he leave yeah. it in Salt Lake City because he, he dipped? Yeah. What funny story, dude. My like my one of my mom, like one of her best friends, dude, like they've known each other for like decades. Like I remember seeing this lady like when I was a child. That's Freddie Juarez says like whatever they are, fiance, girlfriend, I don't know what it is. Crazy. Crazy, bro. Small world, man. Small Small Lake Lake City. City. Up to the, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, So, Club Leon, okay, the next day, comes back. And we put out a, I think, I would would say it was a pretty aggressive lineup, man. Like, I feel like uh, Real Salt Lake. Damn near our best. Real Salt Lake was ready for Club Leon. And... And Club Leon was ready for us. Let's be real. <laughs> they were, man. I, I just want to – I'm looking at the – you know, I've got the match pulled up here in front of me. And, yeah, Leon came to play, man. Um, they they tuck one back on us in the eighth minute. And I'm curious if there was anything that you saw that in that, Josh, that made you feel like – Real Salt Lake was maybe overthinking this one or just not prepared. Um, um, you know, for me, it was more. It was more like the beginning of the Monterey game with a Justin Glad own goal, right? Like, oh boy, like that's early to give one up against a, a Liga Mexi, MX side, uh, especially off like it, it was almost an own goal scenario as well with a, a weird deflection off of Vera's foot into the box. So like you're kind of like. Immediately thinking, oh boy, another one of these nights. Like that's that's not great. Um, and honestly, the way Club Leon pressured RSL, they they pressed our press, which we've seen multiple teams try to do and fail. Um, and Club Leon being one of them. But for the first half, it was working out very well for them. Right? We we couldn't play out. Uh, they had us pinned. You know, created some opportunities. So yeah, the first half, I was I was a little worried. Not gonna lie to you. Yeah. Yeah, same. Um, it felt like it felt like after that first goal. I mean, it's. I know this is all very surface level. Like it's, yeah, it's. it's we say deflating, and we get like we, we know what that all we, we know what that means. But I want to just kind of go back to uh, the lineup uh, before we really diagnose everything or uh, assess anything else. So we've got Musovski and Arango um, at the top which clearly we know is going to pay off for us. And also it's such a fun topic of conversation because going up against LAFC, dude, it's like the old LAFC, not really going versus the new rumored that um, Carlos Vela isn't a hundred percent and won't be playing, which you got to think, is that true? Or are they just saying that we never know? But then we've got Diego Luna who has been stellar. Mm-hmm. We've got Pablo Ruiz, which has also been stellar. Mm-hmm. We've got Brian Ojeda. Do we want to say stellar? Yeah, it's okay. stellar. Yeah. All right, I, I like this stellar or uh, crap. Okay, we'll just break it that. We'll we'll, we'll break it down that way. Yeah. And then we got Jefferson Zavarino. Stellar. <laughs> stellar. <laughs> yeah. And then we've got uh, Andrew Bodie. Bodie. Brody. My bad. <laughs> Yeah, are you sure it's not Andrew Farnsworth, Andy? <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, no, dude, Andrew Brody, man, yes. uh, stellar, dude. He, by the way, I think he had the he had one of the passes, the assist up. To yeah, the bro. the long ball into Masovsky, dude. Oh, my, beauty, what a beauty, ball, bro. Okay, we'll talk about that. I uh, got Brian Vera. I would say he's been damn good. Yeah, he's been solid. He's the only one in this lineup, like. You switch him with Glad, and it's our absolute best lineup. But he's seeing him as a center back paired with Marcelo doesn't concern me. Right, right. right. There was so there cool. be a lot of doubt there, like the the pairings and yeah. Right, it's it's not Eric Holt right filling in. It's not you know who else who else has been there in the past that makes you want to cry. Um, mm-hmm. Not that Eric Holt makes me want to cry, but. You know, Reagan Dunk, right? It's not something like that where you're just like, oh, God, tonight's going to be a night. Or if you want to go back a few years, players playing out of position, just Nick kind Beasley. of having to adapt. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, you got Marcelo Silva. Uh, Silva. <laughs> Dude. 
Need some caffeine, bro. Dude, I'm gonna. I think the problem is, is I've had too much caffeine. But all right, let's just stick with that. Marcelo, Marcelo Silver, <laughs> Marcelo Silver. Yeah, Marcelo yep. Silver, bro. What do you think of him so <laughs> Stellar. far? Stellar. Stellar. All right. And then uh, we've got Emeka and Nelly. Bro, I'm gonna go more than Stellar. He's been solid, man. Like I think so good. when when you're a defender, bro, you have a role to play. And I feel like as a defender, the less that the commentary or the cameras are on you, the better of a job you're doing. Well, let's let's flip and reverse that. The more the cameras are on you in the attacking third, doing doing things, right? Yep. And not on you in the defensive half, that's even better. Yep. Strive strive to get get that like what, eighty twenty, maybe? Yeah. Because you, you'll be on a highlight soon enough because there's there's got to be a goal in this, right? Oh, he's 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 knocking on the door. He'll get one before the year's over, I'm sure. Of it. Yeah, and then we've got uh, Zach McMath um, over. We'll, uh, go, we'll go steady, steady. Yeah, yeah, I would never say stellar about any goalkeeper that isn't named Nick Romando at this point, but we'll go steady, steady yeah. hand. So I want to ask you real quick. Oh, dude, he just you. Uh, you also touched on another topic. Nick Romando lost his grandfather. Uh, we saw that on social media, man. Um, also, we want to express our love and condolences to you and your fam right now, man. Absolutely. Um, Zach McMath, though, one question that we got from a – not a well, pff, could be a listener. But there's a dude overseas who's got a fantasy major league soccer team. And he asked us in the DMs, this is for you. I can't remember your name. I, I would love to actually search it. I'll find your name when maybe Josh answers this question. But he just wanted to know what's going on with uh, McMath and the Beavers pairing. He, he's It's so unpredictable right now, he feels, that he doesn't even know who to keep in week in, week out to register the saves. Or <laughs> You know what I mean? Like His yeah. fantasy is so jacked up because – uh, Pablo's got this rotation going and you know, right now it's hard to say, man, it's hard to say who is the better goalkeeper of the two. And I actually like that conversation a lot. So Josh, I'm going to ask, ask you real quick. Why do you think this rotation is happening? I think the answer is obvious, right? But oh uh, yeah, it's an obvious answer. Yeah. Yeah. It's an obvious answer. You want to rotate the players, keep them fresh, whatever. It's not even that uh, I'll get into it. All right. You'll get into that. I want to know that. Why the rotation? And then also, who is the better goalkeeper of the two? All right, let's get into it. Um, first off, I would uh, trade Zach McMath, if you could, off your fantasy team because there really is no rhyme or reason as to when and where they're playing right now. I, I think um, Beaver's selection in the Monterey game kind of proves that um, as, as to why they're rotating. Beavers is obviously number one goalkeeper coming up here soon, right? So what this is, is you, you don't want to put too much pressure on a young kid, uh, kind of like we saw with Ochoa by making them the immediate number one. Uh, what this is, is you're, you're getting him minutes without putting the pressure of you're the game in game out starter and you have to carry this team on your shoulders quite yet, right? You're, you're dabbling in the experience. You're letting him get experience here and there but not making it so he has to have all of that pressure on his shoulders, especially when you don't necessarily have to, right? Zach McMath is a very steady goalkeeper. You know exactly what you're getting from him. He's a veteran. He's been there. He's done that. Uh, so that that's what that rotation's about. What was, and who's that as far as the better keeper? Um, they both have their strengths, right? Zach McMath is, he is an absolute shot stopper, right? That's his biggest strength. Um, biggest weakness. Uh, distribution, distribution playing with distribution. right yeah. okay and i think that's where beavers has him beat and i think beavers is an excellent shop stopper as well and that's that's honestly just going to continue to get better uh, so i think in the long term gavin beavers is going to be an incredible goalkeeper i think we struggle to keep him in a few years right i think he gets a move to europe and and hopefully does some things um but for the time being you know zach, zach mcmath is the veteran he's steady you would expect to see him against lafc or uh, yeah. the Houston semifinal, right? That, yeah. That's a big moment to throw a young kid into. But I with like Pablo, that. don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if it happens. Yeah. 
So the message, and this comes from, so this person's name is Tom Doherty, I think is how you pronounce that. If I um, mess that up, I'm sorry, but yeah, he's based in the UK and he's playing a fantasy league with uh, Major League Soccer, which is pretty cool. Um, But yeah, that was his question. I'm trying to find out the situation with McMath and Gavin Beavers. Do you know if McMath is likely to concede his number one spot to Beavers anytime soon? The rotation between the two in recent weeks has been a surprise to me. Um, Also, they put a little rumor in here, but this isn't anything that we're going to fuel any fire to. This is... Hold on. on. I haven't read it. I haven't read it. I could see Beavers going to Crystal Palace. Is that the rumor? (laughs) No, 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 no. This is for McMath. McMath. If McMath were to go anywhere, where do you think he'd go? What league? Oh, in the league? Not in the league, but like anywhere in the world, because this is this this is really pinpointed. But I, I this is going to sound people. horrible, but I don't see a market for McMath. Okay, in, anywhere. So then, this is probably going to make a little bit more sense. But this is this is not a RSL show rumor. This is a fan just writing in their rumors, and this reminds me of uh, when I worked at KSL, dude. The there was a guy who would call like daily, and he's like, "Hey." Uh, rumors are we're gonna get lebron james uh this next window <laughs> blah 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 and it's like it was just like the worst rumors ever and we just say okay thanks bye but this one from tom doherty in the uk says i let's see i read that mcmath had a contract extension before this year although not sure till when but i saw a rumor about a move to israel Maccabi haifa i don't hmm. know so I mean, if anyone that, wants- that is a that is a destination for U.S. based players, so that it's crazy. could happen, right? Yeah. Hey, if but anybody, I, I doubt can you it. imagine? Can you imagine if this guy just has the jump, dude, on rumors, and he's That'd just dope. giving us gold? That'd be dope. I mean, the problem with McMahon, I mean, he's no, he's not getting any younger, right? Yeah. So unless they're looking for a very, very veteran goalkeeper, and McMath is trying to go explore right i i don't know it, it doesn't yeah. seem it, it seems weird to me yeah but hey, it could happen yeah mcmath uh i'm starting to appreciate him a little bit more man because you kind of see his personality coming out in social media where he's a little bit more like deadpan humor uh not really like he's not all about it but when he has his little shimmers of uh attention with video he's actually pretty funny so yeah and he's a great humanitarian so props to, props to zach yeah bro we like you man we like you um so yeah uh okay rsl down 1-0 just playing a little bit sloppy need to get their uh feet under them need to kind of be reminded that hey you're playing on home turf this isn't an away game there might be a little bit more leon fans but ultimately this is america first field you're in sandy your house is 20 minutes away. Your car's parked right over there. They need to be reminded that they're playing at home. And if you guys saw the footage, I think Pablo says exactly that. I I don't I, maybe I saw a different video, but uh, there's a video of Pablo hyping them up and saying, "Hey, this is your home turf. Let's get out there and get it." And I think you know the difference maker in coming out in the second half was relying on the two forwards they put in from the get-go, from the jump. And we started to see things mesh a little bit more. We started to see the possession getting a little bit better in the second half. And in the stretch of... I got to look this up, sorry. Two two minutes. Is it two minutes? Yeah. Yeah, two minutes, yeah. Well... Two and change. Truly, truly, I know that there were goals to be had in two minutes but somebody had said three goals in two minutes which is inaccurate um the 69th the 71st the brace for musowski and then the arango goal falling in the 81st so let's rewind and let's go back to the first goal musowski this is the ball that's whipped in from saverino Mm -hmm. and musowski finds his head connects and just finishes with grace and poise. And, and wide open. Wide open. Okay, and, and real quick, when we get into to the Moose, uh, apologies to Moose, right? Uh, 
he he came into the season, you know, off of a rough end of his season last year. I right? didn't see a lot of time, saw some time on the wing. No RSL fans really high on him. Trey's Trey's saying, be patient, be patient, it'll come along. Chicho gets here, man, and dude, he's a man on fire. It's like he just turned it on. And he had scored some goals up to Chicho getting here, right? I don't know if you knew he was coming or what, but Musaski is has played himself into being undroppable at this point. Like yeah. him and Chicho have to be the starters up top. It's insane, man. It's it's insane that how quickly the tides can turn and how things can shift, especially with this club, because where we used to complain about no depth, well now we got a hell of a lot of depth. And now it's now it's coming down to how do we shift, how do we adjust, who are our best up top for the type of team that we're going to play. And if you had to think about it, Josh, going into an LAFC who just kicked ass Seven to one, dude. Yeah, but how how good is it? I don't know how good FC Juarez is, like honestly. They're a pretty decent team. I mean, dude, they took it to uh, their previous opponents. Let me pull it up here real quick. They beat, uh, I want to say they beat Austin. Yeah, so. Yeah, but, that's, but that's, I mean, Austin's not great. I'm, I mean, seven one is still absolutely brutal, right? <laughs> yeah, it's but an upset. It, it's not like LAFC just beat Monterey seven one. Yeah. And you know, you know I mean? it is. I mean, it is a little bit early on in the season. Obviously, uh, Liga Mekis are only about three matches played into their season, but they're sitting. Uh, I don't even want to tell you where they're sitting yeah, at. But it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, they're a decent team, and and they had beat Austin three one, and and that's a strong Austin team. I, I mean, Austin, they've been teetering, kind of tottering a little bit, but there was a lot of. There were a lot of upset fans after that match. And I remember there was one fan that got interviewed specifically who was like, dude, I've been trying to advocate for the MLS and trying to explain to like my Hispanic family why Austin FC is great. And then FC Juarez comes in here and goes 3-1 on us. Yeah, exactly. So I don't want to say they're a, a bad team. They're a competitive team. But LAFC, a sorely disappointing any FC Juarez fan, dude, seven one is just an ass beating, dude. Yeah, that's brutal. I that's don't think hard. they're gonna beat us seven one though. No, I, I don't think so either. Them. I don't think so either. Not with this. And so my question just to kind of go back uh before I started to ramble about FC Juarez and Sebastian Saucedo, um, which actually we'll talk about him in a minute. If you were Pablo Mastroeni, who would you be Throwing up top, would you roll with the same? Would you keep Arango and Musovski for LAFC, or what kind of adjustments would you make? Um, yeah, I'd go Musovski and Chicho, and then I'd bring Demir off the bench um, to just give everyone a little reminder and some nightmares, right? <laughs> I, I think there's no reason to not play Chicho and Moose, especially because they're going to want it, right? They're going to want to show LAFC oh, yeah. why they shouldn't have traded them. If we're being completely honest. Oof, yeah. The revenge game. Dude, I love that, dude. Yeah, it's a, if you were to ask me, it's, I like that point of going up against your former team. Both of them coming on, off like hot goals, right? Like they're, they're on fire right now. Chicho and Musovsky, they're on fire. There's no right. better way to, to put it. No, no reason to dampen those flames. No, dude. So, the way to keep them on fire and keep them energized is to give them the start, which I anticipate we would all get. If if that doesn't happen, I'm going to really question why. But you start those two against their former team. And Chicho was actually interviewed uh, the other day, and he was asked if he would celebrate against LAFC. And I love his answer. I really yeah. do. Then the answer was yeah. great, right? I mean, yeah. he's he said he would keep the the celebration to a minimum, just to his regular uh, celebration, but something to a, the effect of, "I'm with Real Salt Lake now, so I am entitled to to celebrate if I want to exactly. for yep. the team that I play for," which is great. And you know, they they did kind of do him a little dirty, dude, when they let go of him. I I I, I don't. <sighs> I don't understand what LAFC was thinking, right? I know they have cap issues, things like this, but like 
you couldn't figure out a way to keep him on your roster. The, the fans are met like the fans want him to stay. Yep. He's the golden boot winner. But why are you trying so hard to get rid of it? I think that says a little bit about the LAFC culture, though, is you could be a great team player, but they care more about the individual and making space for the individual rather than retaining people who uh, would love to be there. Right. Um, who was their uh, who was their former uh, one of like their forwards? Was it is it Christian Ramirez? Uh, what's his name, dude? You know who I'm I, talking about? I think about. he was there for a minute. Yeah. I, there, I know you're talking about, but he was there for a minute, but he was there when they won the uh, supporter shield and he had a pretty big role uh, with LAFC and the same thing. They kind of phased him out and then they kind of moved on to bigger and greater things. But I think that's kind of the culture that you have at LAFC. It's like, it, it is about the silverware and it's great to win championships, but the year after you win a, the supporter shield, the championship, all of that. And then you part with your, Arguably one of your best players who was hand in hand with Carlos Vela. In fact, he outperformed Carlos Vela. He outperformed Carlos Vela. Yeah, he outperformed him. Um, and then I, I believe Carlos Vela actually sat out a few games. But why would you? Yeah. Why would you part with that person? Your who, best player. It, yeah. It's ridiculous. And, and you, they you think you'd work out your roster and make it work, right? Like, yeah, I believe he wasn't even he wasn't even a DP with them and they had to make him a DP. But like you make the golden boot winner at DP. Yeah. Right. For your club. You, you make the guy that just carried you to a cup, your DP. Yeah. I, I don't get it. I would be, if that was like, let's say we did that to Demir after he like won the golden boot for us and was in the race for the league. And we won MLS cup final. And we're just like, Oh, uh, Colorado wants you. So uh, you're going to go to a different league for six months and then come back. Not even, uh, not even Colorado. Like we'd, we'd be sending him to like Pachuca. Or something like that. You know I'm know? saying, like, for him to come back, right? So, like, oh, sure. Arango left so he could come back, like, to make the deal work. Oh, right, right, right. right yeah, right. yeah. And, uh, yeah, honorable mention to Bachuca. That's where uh, Arango went after they departed with him. He went to Pachuca just for a few months. And even then, the messages that were sent to Chicho, even in that brief time, were positive and, like, encouragement and also. Hey, why are we parting with this guy? But they ultimately were kind of wishing him luck in Major League Soccer. So it just goes to show and it goes to tell you that Chicho is a is a very a very likable person, a very likable figure when he's with your club, and he's going to be a difference maker. And uh, I think it, just for him, it, it was just a matter of finding a club that would uh, appreciate him and then nurture that relationship. But the vibe that I get from Marango is this dude is all in, bro. Like he's here to play in this league he's here to represent real salt lake represent this city get us goals and he said it he wants to get silverware why not this year when we interviewed him we're like hey man blah 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 yada yada what do you see the future and and he laid it out he's like why why can't we win a trophy this year it's like well that's a good point chicho and you can please do (laughs) yeah so anyways um if you haven't go get a chicho jersey put a little number nine on the back slap it on there but i think i think he's going to get a warm uh reception man from the lafc fans and i actually this is how it this is how disconnected i am it's a way at la correct. right yes, yeah correct so and i think him and moose will both get a warm welcome right they're going to man because yeah. those were intricate parts in helping build that legacy and, and you can and it wasn't it wasn't a roost neck situation where chicho wanted out either like yeah. th- these fans wish these two guys still played for their team i see it on on social media all day long. You, you, I I think that's one thing I can appreciate about LAFC fans is that they want to keep, they want to keep those, uh, those players who had an impact at their club. Um, but the disconnect there, the FO with like, you know, LA's we're, we're, we're Los Angeles. We're the city's club. We're going to go after it. We're going to make big moves. Well, in that you lose hindsight of, all of the, you know, it, it's it's the whole like built not bought mentality that we have here, except it's just in reverse over there. It's bought not built, and when we've gassed you, and when we think you're done, we'll dispose of you. And the truth is, is like they disposed of Chicho with like a, a gas tank that was like still filled, like at eighty percent. You know what I mean? 
Well, he's in his prime. <laughs> yeah, twenty eight years old in his prime. Like it's so stupid. They literally, man. they literally like screwed the poo. Had this guy flourish, and right in the middle of his flourish, like, okay, we don't want you anymore. New project. It That's is good. one of the most confusing, most baffling. I remember when they let him go. Did I just like I could not believe it and then it was cool to have those rumors linked up with rsl and i remember we went to training and uh we asked trey if if there was some weight behind that and he's just like yeah he's like we were trying and that's all we got and so anyways i'm so happy he's here man i think he's such a uh, he's such a good role model too dude for for players and um it just helps build this roster and obviously you see the effect everyone is playing better everyone's getting the service everyone is looking to pass him the ball and you know the dude could put the ball in the back of the net, like, uh, dude, we we lucked out with that, dude. I I I hope I hope he's here for a long time, man. I I hope he retires here. Let's yeah. be real. Yeah, yeah. It's that's all, dude. You you just you score. I don't know what the number is, dude. Five six goals. I don't know what the number is, but you do that in a season early, and you just say you love us. Like we'll build you a statue. It's not Absolutely. that hard here. He'll he'll finish the season with ten plus, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. So cool. Second goal. Let's talk about this one. What do I call Andrew Brody? I call him Bodie. Bodie. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Bodie Farnsworth uh, bro, Davis. Yeah. Hidalgo. <laughs> Davidson. <laughs> um, Andrew Brody, dude. Passive. If, if passive the week was a thing, dude, he would have won it, dude. Just a, a beautiful kick from like just beyond the half line. It was just behind. Just behind. That's what I meant. Beyond. Yeah, yeah. What did I say? Did I say beyond? Yeah, behind? which would make I me think so. he's on the attacking side. But anyway, it doesn't Anyways, matter. he's behind the half line. Connects his boot. The ball's just a floater. And it falls perfectly. I mean, times the run with Musovsky. Mm-hmm. Musovsky, I'm not going to say one touch, but takes a touch. Settles the ball nicely. Then he's one-on-one with a keeper. And just bags another goal in literally two minutes, dude. Yeah, two minutes. Boom, boom. The the music's not, the, and that's the, the kind of goals that we love, right? When when it's like the, the when the song is finishing out, like here at the right, and then you're ah, yeah, and, and then it starts. Again. Again. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's like replay it, bro. Put it on repeat. Those are my favorite goals uh, at the stadium, dude. But Moose, man, just just showing the class, and uh, I think that. You know, you keep this trajectory up, dude. You're going to be viewed. And I mean, if not, you're already working towards that perception like we just expressed with Chicho, right? Dude, right. like you, you you, continue to do that and you continue to create the space, make the plays, get goals and put us ahead, dude. Like, I mean, come back 1-0 after the half. I mean, we've seen it so many times. Um, not 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 the sense of a comeback, but we know what a 1-0 go is going into halftime. Well, sometimes you don't feel like you're out of it, like. right? You're, we don't feel like we're eliminated at that point, right? It's a little we're bit. We're still and alive. We're still alive until until that whistle blows. Like you have faith in this RSL team to score. Yeah. So quick two one. Well, and and real quick, who who would have pictured Musowski being the guy that's gonna get in behind for a breakaway? That's twice now in League's Cup, right? Yeah. But that's like the Anderson Julio role, not the Danny Musowski role. But you know, I'll take it wherever it's going to come from. Yeah, agreed, man. It's just uh, it's it 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 really is beautiful soccer. Like I I don't think we use the term that often or that too much, but no. those plays just beautiful, man. And you can tell everyone's involved. I mean, for the first the first goal, the assist coming in from Savarino. Severino's a workhorse, dude. I feel like he is like a German shepherd, bro. Like, you know, mm-hmm. when you have a German shepherd, if you just have it housed inside all day, not doing anything, it's not going to be happy. But the minute that you give Severino the ability to, again, uh, like I said it for Mosovsky, uh, create space, hold up balls, get assists, play the balls in, taking shots, you know he's happy. And I think mm-hmm. that the, for, you know, for the longest time when, when he's not involved in those plays or when he's not contributing, uh, whether it's a goal or an assist, you could tell that dude is just like devastated. Like he just doesn't, he, he doesn't care to be there in that moment. And so he's the workhorse, man. He's, he's one of the driving forces with this uh, squad. And I think that the way that we're playing now and involving everybody, it's just going to continue to kind of pile on and it's going to make everybody happy. 
it, I mean, and you can tell the mood of the team by just the celebration after that second goal, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. There, there's nothing better for me than to see the team celebrate like that together. Like it, yeah. it literally just brings a smile to your face, right? Yeah. To see Marcelo fly over the pile and like <laughs> body surf, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's wholesome, right? Yeah, man. And it's, it's beautiful to have just so much diversity on this team, dude. I mean, so many different backgrounds, and it's not to say that we've had that, you know, not to say it's been a problem in the past or anything like that, but um, these guys, you can just tell they, they vibe well, man. They gel well. Like the chemistry is at an, uh, at an all time high. And you know that if you're Pablo Mastroini, your job is getting significantly easier uh, to, to manage. It's easier to go out to the media and, and, and have a good conversation. He's got to be loving life right now, man. And, I will be the first. Well, we've said it so many times before. We're eating crow, but if uh, Pablo, you could tweet at us at some point if you if you get a Twitter ever, you know, just get, hit us with the "told you so," bro, and we'll accept it. Hey, we we've always been upfront and said I will happily eat crow. Um, but to touch on something you you said, Andy, there there were times and there have been times in the past where the locker room hasn't been like this, right? The locker room has been clicky, right? You have the the Hispanic players, you have a couple yep. of the, you know, the guys that like to fish, right? They they've always been kind of separate like that, but you really get the feeling now that, you know, everyone's hanging out, everyone's getting along, and, mm-hmm. and that's really important. So that's that's where Pablo and his Ted Lasso ness, I think, has really come in, and yeah. I think it is very important for this team to continue that trend. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. So. The uh, the final goal comes from our favorite, one of our favorite Colombians, because I think a lot of the, a lot of the Colombian players on the squad are our are our favorite. But again, I just kind of want to um, walk us through this goal a little bit here. Going to the eighty, no, it was like the what, what minute was it? Eighty eighty first. First, yeah, eighty first. So. It's the corner kick, and must, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That was Pablo Ruiz on the corner, yeah. He ha- it had to. Have uh, I yeah, sure. Okay, it was. It was. So Pablo Ruiz, I'm watching it back now. Kick back. Ooh, and there's somebody who got the header on it, dude. Oh, it was Brian Vera. Vera, yeah. Vera who came up for the header on frame. Just a keeper deflection, and then Chicho's just right there in front of him, just to get a little boot on it. Dude, he, it was a total three. Wando goal, right? But a goal <laughs> yeah. is a goal, and I'll take it, bro. Don't say Wandalowski around me, man. You know how I'll go on tangents about that guy, dude. I love him so much. Um, but yeah, man, just a clean, uh, like a, a just a well placed corner. Brian Vera, um, ah, dude, how, how tall is Vera, dude? He's not short. No, he's like six one, six two. Think so? Yeah. All right, let's verify that real quick. Um, he's got the stature, and he just rises up like a salmon, like Brian Dunseth would say. And it's uh, it, it's just it's a thing of beauty, man. And he's five eleven, so close. Really? He's five eleven. Yeah. No, he is five eleven. He's yeah. the same height as me, bro. I Do know you that. But he's he's got hops, bro. He jumps. Um, well, he's fit as well. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. So. <laughs> He, he he gets up there, puts it on target, and then Chicho is just there to clean it. I mean, I I just the this team is just something that uh, we haven't seen for a while. And I know that if you listen to a lot of like RSL podcasts, a lot of RSL media, we're all going to say the same stuff. Like, oh, it's a new squad. It's it's a different. It's so much fun. Blah blah blah. But like, it really is. It's fun soccer. We go into every match just expecting to win. At this point, like I think I think LAFC is going to be a hard fought battle. But I think just with the state of everything, and like we said, we've got two fired up dudes who won a cup there. Go in there and give them hell. Yeah. And honestly, this might be the, the first time ever that I'm like, oh, yeah, we, we could beat LAFC. Yeah. Right? It's not out of the question. Whereas before it's like, oh, it's going to take a miracle, right? It's going right. to have to be the cry lot kid or you know something weird happening for us to get the win. No, we could go to LAFC and get a win. Especially it's with not this out of the question. Especially with this depth, especially with this team mentality, especially with the good vibes. And a beautiful thing is I know 
I know these guys are going to give it all they got uh, today, later today uh, versus LAFC. The one thing that I want to do before we do wrap up, Josh, is I want predictions, dude. Uh, I want to hear. I know. I know you don't like to do these, but let's give a score prediction and then we're out of here and we're going to let everybody else enjoy their day. All right. I'm going to be. Can go with give my us, gut. Give us, I, I want two predictions. I want the prediction at the half and then the final score prediction. I think 1 1 at the half. And Who then gets I think the first goal on RSL side? Chicho, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That's been a dirty celebration too, bro. Yeah. And then I think I think the game finishes like three two. Um I think I think Moose gets one. And then I think Demir comes in and just crushes their souls again like Demir likes to do. Okay. But that's my scenario. That's me happy. That's a great game for me. Love that. Love that. Love that. Um I am going to say I guess it doesn't matter what I think. It'll be at the half. Let's say like 1-0 for LAFC. But I think that this game is going to be... It's going to go just back and forth. I think there's. I think it's going to be like a 2-2. And then it's going to be uh, PKs. Oh, bro. Don't. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. No, no, no. I think it's going to be a 2-2. Nope, 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 we're going go to we're gonna go to PKs. And RSL is going to uh, pull it back. And I'll, uh, I'll actually hang on. I'll say this. PKs, if McMath is in goal, we lose. If Beavers is in goal, we win. Wow. Bold, but I'll take it. Yeah. You know McMath's pretty good at PKs, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I you know, we, we've seen a lot of young talent just kind of get their moments. Uh, for those True. people who watched the Inter Miami match, uh, which was phenomenal and crazy and anxiety inducing and uh it just hit all the markers for uh defenseless soccer and high high uh goals there's a lot of young talent just uh winning big games if you guys saw the free kick yesterday benjamin kramaski or kramashi i'm not sure how you say his name 18 years old steps up and wins it for inter miami to advance them over fc dallas and it was just an insane game did you saw that yeah I I did, and I, I texted you guys and was like, "Oh man, is this when Miami finally loses?" And honestly, the second I pushed send on that text, I was like, I just <laughs> it. "This game's gonna get wild." And yeah. Sure enough, man, highlights for days. You saw the stat out there saying that uh, Messi's already like tied. He's like, I think he's like in a four way tie for like the most scored gold or <laughs> the most goals scored. <laughs> Something crazy, some stupid, ridiculous stat. He hasn't even played like three matches. Right. That's a total indictment as to how bad Miami is, though. Yeah. Or has been. Horrible. Uh, and now we're getting, you know, we're getting rumors about Neymar and uh, Mbappe. Mbappe come into the league. And I don't know, man. Maybe this is like the great migration overhaul of football talent because the MLS, I think it, it is a, it's an attractive league. And, if you can come here and just ball bro and like get all these accolades and win trophies and maybe you're not at the highest level, but you have a deal with Apple that's paying you a ton of money and you just get to run circles around all these defenders, then sure. Have at it. Why not? Yeah. Uh, I could see Neymar doing it. Mbappe. He's if Mbappe young. happens, that's big. Cause he's so young. I know he, he has no business over here right now, unless he just wants to come and play with Messi. But I don't know that. I don't think that pairing would happen. I, I can't see the the outrage that would happen if what's already uh, happening. You got Jordi Alba, Busquets, and Messi on right. The it's already ridiculous, right? Like, so if they were to throw another one on there, people would be like, "Okay, this yeah. this is stupid." But, I like what it's doing for the league in terms of growth and coverage, and everybody tuning in and breaking records and all these. But what I don't what I don't like is it's just it's going to turn into that soccer that. We all, you know, we, we see with like Saudi Arabia and these like big owners coming into the EPL and making these huge like super teams in terms of soccer. And in some ways it just, it makes it super unfair right. because you have well, leagues. Did you have leagues where it's like, you only know of like FC Bayern and you only know of like Barcelona, PSG and 
all the other teams in the league are just kind of irrelevant, especially at the bottom of the table, uh, because you've got like three or four super teams just getting all the attention because that's where all the talent is. And right. so well, and, and MLS's goal has always been parody, so it wouldn't make sense for their true aim, right? You would but just you could throw you could throw one of them on LAFC, you could throw one of them in Miami or uh, Miami yeah. in New York or something, you know, you could you could do it. You just have to make sure that you're allowing other teams that want to keep up to spend and keep up to keep that parity alive. Yeah, and I think um you know, if we get on a model like the NBA, I feel like the NBA, I mean, as of recent you have like all these super teams obviously, but for the most part, you do feel like things kind of stayed steady and kind of stay even um if it gets to that level and there's big talent it could be cool but yeah i i, I would really question what what where mls is going if inter miami somehow just pull off a run win every game L- leo messi is getting like a brace and hat tricks every game and they end up winning a cup you know what i mean like yeah i like i know they're performing. Of everybody or something yeah, and I know they're doing well right now and, and having some games and performing. FC Dallas almost had them, right? I, I do think a team is going to eventually figure him out. They're going to stop him. Messi will cool off maybe. Um, I, I am honestly, like, I'm already irritated because I think they're getting a little bit of special treatment from referees. Oh, yeah. Um, that's going to get old real quick, right? Like, Messi should have had a red card two games ago. Busquets, same. Um, the goal that was allowed last night, uh, Messi's first goal, RSL had one turned over for less than that in the same kind of situation earlier this year. So, you know, that that's going to get annoying. Uh, hopefully that doesn't continue, but it yeah. will. I mean, there's favoritism. Uh, I do think the team will figure them out. There's favoritism, dude, for the superstars and the people who drive the views and the clicks uh, to the league. I mean... Dude, MLS is just breaking social media records right now. I mean, I, I there was a post, there was a messy post the other day with like 100,000 likes on it, and that just doesn't happen for Major League Soccer every every day. Um, yeah. Benjamin Kramoski, the guy who, the the young 18-year-old who won the penalty in, in a matter of hours, like picked up 23,000 followers, yeah. uh, which just isn't normal for this league. And so it's cool to see the growth, but also – Let's just kind of stick to the roots and remember that we're trying to be competitive. And um, right, well, here's my thing: where it's the equivalent is only good for a couple years. But yeah, but it is the equivalent of like inviting your older brothers to come play like football with you, like during your your uh, lunch at like recess or they're all they already graduated high school and like we're in sixth grade. You know what I mean? Right, Right. But my point is like, is this Miami's peak? Right, like. After after Messi, what is Miami going to have? Because you can't just go get the the world's best player all the time. So, like in Maybe. in terms of sustainability and long term success, like is this? I mean, obviously, I'm never going to turn down Messi to Real Salt Lake, right? But I don't think so. Yeah, it, was he promised a franchise like David Beckham was? I don't think so. Okay, because I was going to say, see that that'll go two ways if. Yeah, I don't think he's getting a franchise. If he were to get a franchise, then obviously he's got the pool of being Lionel Messi and everybody would want to come play for him. But if he's at Inter Miami to answer your question, well, now you have another influencer to add next to David Beckham to be like, hey, dude, come play over here. And, and right, yeah, right. in four or five years, like you can pull an Mbappe to Inter Miami, no problem. Right, in four or five years. But what about the interim, right? Because we saw how poorly Miami was put together before. Yeah. So like, is this Miami's peak? You know I what I mean? Kind of so. like, kind of like Henri was New York Red Bulls peak, or Beckham yeah. probably wasn't LA Galaxy's peak, but he was in there. Oh yeah. So you know, it, it's kind of weird to look at it that way. Like, our, whereas like Seattle has lots of peaks because they haven't gone and taken just one superstar. They've been able to build that team naturally, right? It, it's it's a weird thought to think, you know, what happens to Miami when when Messi leaves? Because obviously they were terrible before he got here. Yeah. What happens when he goes? But I think that's the key is you got to stake a player to a club or like a franchise because had they done that with Beckham, like giving him something with the Galaxy long term, then then Messi would probably be playing for the Galaxy right now. Right. It's it's a weird it's a weird thought. So, I mean, <laughs> I guess we'll know in a couple of years, right? That's yeah, fun, dude, man. It's it's it is fun and it is cool to witness it, dude. And 
Uh, it's great to see the messy free kicks, man. You you know, like I like Cristiano, bro. You know, I know I take a lot of flack for that, but it is cool to see, like, yeah, like Messi's the real deal. You know what I mean? It's, just it's stupid. It's, it's stupid how good he is. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, just tearing up defenses. But you know what? Credit to FC Dallas, bro. They took it to that team, dude, and and they almost had him. They almost had him. They yeah, that's what I mean. I'm, I'm really curious to see them play LAFC. I'm curious to see them play Monterey. I'm curious Real to see Salt them play Lake. Seattle. Real Salt Lake, right? They're going to face some tests. Yeah. If FC Dallas could take them you know, for a ride like that. And, and again, it's what everyone said Miami's biggest weakness is, is their defense, right? If you can score some goals on them and obviously not score an own goal and, and try to contain Messi a little bit, then you, you can get the upper hand on them. Yeah. Yeah, this is a whole – we could do a whole Lionel Messi show, but uh, I know you guys are here for Real Salt Lake. But, hey, it's fun to talk about the league, and it's fun to talk about um, – The greatest the water, player to walk the earth. Yeah. These scenarios and all that stuff. So we'll see, man. Um, when does the Open Cup resume, dude? We're pretty close to that, no? I want to say uh, the 20th is is the Houston game. It's yeah. right around that. Don't quote me, but – yeah. So and there is still that very real possibility of maybe having a final with Lionel, Lionel. Yeah, Nathan. we'll we'll see if we can even get into that game if it happens. Huh? I think our chances would be actually pretty decent, dude, because uh, there's there's a lot of media here. Oh, actually, if it's a final, yeah. it's national media, it's worldwide <laughs> yeah. media. We're maybe, we're Dunsky. Maybe not, dude. Maybe yeah. not. You're right, but I don't know. Anyways. Guys, we'll leave you with that. Uh, the RSL show. Follow us on KSL Sports. Um, follow us on YouTube. We're on there too. And uh, please, 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 if you can, visit the east side of the stadium right by the team store. Go pay your respects. Go show some love. Um, even if you're not leaving anything, just go out there, pay respects to a great human, a great person, a great human being, uh, our friend and your friend, John Jenna. <laughs>